Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to my Code to Care series. Uh, in this video today, I wanted to talk about one way to think about use cases in generative AI and how you might stratify uh, these and think about what you should do first versus second uh, versus uh, third, that, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's a simple four blocker uh, model. I saw it presented a couple of weeks ago by Peter Durlock from uh, Microsoft uh, Nuance. He's the uh, chief strategy officer there, so I'll give him credit for, uh, for this. Um, but it's basically a four blocker, um, which I'll describe and I'm going to give you one example. So on this axis, you kind of have value. And this would be like, oops, high and low. Uh, and then on this axis, you have risk. And I'll do low and high. Uh, and so, and you put your different use cases into this four blocker. Uh, so as you can imagine, let me do a different color, that this is your good quadrant. So things that are high value and lower risk, you want to get started on right away. Uh, and then uh, next are these two quadrants. So things that are probably this one, things that are maybe high value but higher risk. And if you can figure out a way to manage that risk, um, then, uh, then this is some, some good projects. Um, you know, maybe some of these, it's not this, excuse me, uh, maybe some of these, um, actually I wouldn't do those. I think you start on the top, high value, um, and especially low risk, um, and then maybe some, some additional uh, risk. But I think there's a good way, you're going to have 10, 20 use cases that people want to implement, and then as a leadership team, you can sort of lay these out on this kind of two by two um, and determine what to work on. So let me give an example uh, of, um, of the way I've assessed a few things. So uh, low risk, high value in healthcare is ambient. Uh, for those of you not, not uh, aware of what I'm talking about, imagine a physician office visit with a patient and there's a recording device in the room that's recording the visit with the patient's permission. Uh, and then generative AI takes that audio, transcribes it, summarizes it, writes a note, um, uh, and then kind of writes a bunch of actions potentially to update the EMR. And this note and the actions are reviewed by the physician and signed by the physician prior to being filed in the chart in a, in a permanent way. Okay, so that's kind of the ambient learning um, uh, thing. Uh, and then uh, another one that we're working on, and a lot of people are, and talking about, is clinical summarization. So this is uh, using generative AI to help a physician understand what's going on with the patient. So summarize this patient's history, what's their history of cardiac disease, have they been in here before, those, those kinds of things. Uh, and this is also a very high value uh, use case. But I would say it's a slightly higher risk uh, use case, and I'll describe why? First of all, we got started on summarization first because chronologically it's first. You know, physician's going to see a patient. You want to learn what's going on with the patient, and ambient comes at the end of the uh, the visit. So we started on summarization. It's also simpler technically. You're taking the text, you're taking a user question, and you're answering that question. Ambient, you got audio, you got transcription or. Uh, um, uh, you got to turning that into text, then you have summarizing it, then you have other sorts of things. So it's more complex. So we started simple. But the industry is really adopting ambient, um, I think because of the value is high, um, but also there's a human in the loop, uh, and that makes the risk lower. So in ambient, you're basically um, summarizing that audio, what happened in the visit, but the physician is in the loop, and that the physician is reading it, reviewing it, and signing it, okay? So that's a human in the loop process. The other thing that makes it a uh, lower risk is that this is the latest in decades of this kind of thing for documenting visits. We've had dictation with transcription companies. We've had voice recognition. We've had scribes, you know, helping out the physician. So we've been trying to help the physician with this task for a long time. And ultimately, this is the next generation of that, but still, the workflow is about the same. The accountability is still about the same. A physician is looking at this, signing it, and then it goes in the chart. 
Clinical summarization, however, you're asking questions and you're getting an answer straight from the LLM and no human has been involved in checking whether that is right or not. Okay, So there's not a human in the loop. Of course, there's a human that's receiving the summary, but not in the loop generating the summary. So though it's extremely valuable, it is at least a notch higher risk, uh, if not a few notches uh, higher risk. So the way you validate that, the way you think about adopting that in clinical practice, um, the way you manage those risks, um, the way you have to explain where the model got its answers and give the user ability to double check everything, the burden is higher uh, when the risk is higher for all those kinds of features. So that is why I think Ambien is taking off first in, uh, in healthcare over clinical summarization is because of this risk difference, even though they're both high value use cases. So I hope that was interesting. Uh, and until next time, bye.